Good afternoon to everybody. Hey Amen. It's so good to see you on today. It was a beautiful day today, wasn't it? And yeah, we thank God for for this day. Um, we have the Clovis A. Drake Shoe Rally that um, comes every year, and this year the semi-annual of the Empire Convention is here in Albany, and the Shoe Rally is going to be on Thursday, and so uh, you can, uh, there will be a uh, shoe in the lobby in which you can give to the Shoe Rally, all right, and it's, uh, of course, there's a direct connection to us because of Sister Clovis Drake, uh, and uh, f former first lady of the church, and worked so well and did so much in the church and outside of Metropolitan, and served as the women's president. And uh, so, and it, all of the funds go to scholarships that the Women's Auxiliary of the Empire Convention does. Now, we want to win. We're part of Central Hudson, and uh, we want to. We won last year, and uh, y'all know I don't like to lose. All right, so. We want to win, uh, uh, and we want to support this wonderful work in the name of our former First Lady, the great work that uh, Sister Clovis A. Drake did in honor of her. Amen? Amen. We go to Sweet Pilgrim Baptist Church immediately after service on Sunday. So we have a 10 o'clock service, baptism and communion here, and then we will go over to Sweet Pilgrim to be with Dr. Taylor for his uh, pastor's anniversary. And then on next Wednesday, we will not be here. Uh, the Reverend Kokisha Bailey Robinson is preaching for the semi-annual on Wednesday night at the Hilton, Albany Hilton. So we're going to move Metro U over there uh, to support her. We, she's no stranger to Metropolitan. She's been with us many times. She was with us in the fall. Uh, so, you know, uh, you go, let's go support your, your niece, your, your auntie, Aunt Coco, and uh, let's be there to hear her in good numbers there. Uh, for uh, and then on the 15th will be the final s session for Metro U. We will meet two weeks from now for the last lesson and the completion ceremony. All right, so please make a note of that. Not next week, not the 8th, but the 15th. All right, all right, yes. Go to the Hilton downtown, Albany Hilton. All right, and at seven o'clock, the service begins. Seven o'clock, all right. That's going to be good. We want to support uh, Cousin Coco. All right, so let's go support Auntie Coco. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, Auntie Coco. Let's, let's do that. All right. Now, um... Let's turn to Psalm 119. And our lesson today is peace in the midst of persecution. Session 17, May the 1st, is page 22 in your syllabus. And as we're getting ready for that, let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for today, and we thank you for this privilege to come to your word. Your word is vital. Your word is victory. Your word is valuable. Uh, your word gives us strength, gives us sustenance. And so now, Lord, our prayer is that you would speak to us, allow us to recognize your word as truth related to areas that needs to be applied, respond in a spirit of obedience, and then rush out of here to put it into practice. We honor you. We thank you. We bless your name. Uh, and we say thank you for this encounter with your word. Speak to us now, Lord, as only you can. In Jesus' name, we say hallelujah. 
and and a man. All right, Psalm 119, verse 161. So it says sheen at the top of it. Some of your versions may say that that's the second to the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And this, you know, we're near the end of uh, our study, and we've been in for over a year and a half, but it's, it's been a blessing, uh, it really has, of living by the book and of studying God's Word. You know, nowadays, um, you know, we used to take Polaroid, anybody remember Polaroid cameras that we used to take? You know, now we do uh, selfies, and um, one of the things about the selfies is you can look at certain particular features of yourself uh, or someone else, you know, as you, as you look at this, this still photo. And really this stanza, this strophe, this part of Psalm 119 gives us a snapshot, a selfie, if you will, a screenshot of a person who's able to have peace in the midst of persecution. Uh, so it shows us that no matter the difficulty of your dilemma, the, the, the pain, your persecution, whatever you're dealing with, it's possible to have some peace. It's possible to still uh, have some peace and some calmness and have a relaxed mental attitude even in the midst of chaos going ar on around you. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that, you know, many of us, God takes us through certain things, but we need to understand that God is still working. And really your appetite for God's word really reveals your relationship with God. That when you delight in God's word, when you have a desire for God's word, when you have a desperation for God's word, it reveals the kind of relationship you have. And you know, th there ought to be an unqu unquenchable thirst that you have for the word of God. You know, uh, a friend of mine has a 12 year old boy and he says, you know, he's a growing boy. You know, he's eating up everything. He's hungry all the time. He's hungry. He's a growing boy. I said, you know, he's talking about how much he's, you know, how much he's spending on groceries now because his son always wants to eat something. He looks like, seems like he's always hungry. Why he's eating one meal, he's thinking about the next meal that he's going to have. I mean, that's how hungry he is. And I said, well, I told him, well, he's a growing boy. And when you're a growing, growing child, you have a desire to eat. Well, y'all, when you are a growing Christian, you have a desire and appetite for God's word. And you will know what kind of Christian you are by your desire, by your desperation, by your appetite for the word of God. And so when we get to this stanza, it's different than other stanzas because it's the only stanza where the psalmist does not ask for God to deliver him from what he's in. He's been in some, some rough situations. It seems like it's an ongoing battle he has with those who are against him. And in other stanzas, he's asking God, you know, get me out of this. Deliver me. Remove me. But in this stanza, he's come to a point in his life where he's saying, I'm, it's not about deliverance. It's not so much deliver me from it, but keep me in the midst of it. His prayer is shifting. This is the only time he's, he's said that. So we understand, you know, the prayer and this whole psalm has been a, a declaration, also a prayer. And prayer is not just designed to change your circumstances. Prayer is designed to change you. And what you discover the more you pray is that oftentimes God will not change your circumstance. He will not change your situation, but he can change you. And when you understand that God is keeping you, you'll get excited. When you understand that in the midst of what you're going through, God is still, he may not deliver you from it, but he's keeping you in it. It makes you delighted and excited about God's presence. All right, so let's, let's, let's get into this. Let's, let's go through this. It's a lot, and I've got a, about a few minutes. So let's, let's get into this. Psalm 119, 
161 says, princes have persecuted me without cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Now, first of all, we see he's a persecuted man. All right. He acknowledges the situation and the reality that he's in. It, it, he, the verse, very first verse colors and shapes the rest of the stanza. He says that 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 I'm the princes have persecuted me. So we know that he is a man of stature. We're not sure who this who wrote this. Was it Daniel? Was it Ezra? Was it Jeremiah? Was it someone? We're not sure who wrote it, but whoever he was had some type of sta- statue. He was some of some type of importance. Why is that? Because he said princes are against him. People of statue, people of position are against him. And y'all princes don't have times to deal with little penny ante regular people. If princes gonna come after somebody, they're gonna come after other folk of statue. So we know if they're coming after him, he's got some type of stat, he's of some type of importance. And he says that that you know, these people they're trying to harm him, they're trying to persecute him, but he says, My heart embraces your word. He says, In spite of what I'm going through, I still have a con watch what he says, my heart standeth in awe of your word. He says, I still have a a awe and I still have an amazement of your word. That's vitally important that we should have a conviction that embraces God's word, that the the greater your conviction of God's word, the more you dig into, the more commitment you will have of God's word. And oftentimes, you know, this particular psalmist, apparently he's been criticized because of his commitment to the word of God. But he says, y'all, in spite of that, I'm still committed to your word. And in other words, he's saying they are mad at me because I'm committed to your word. But the more they persecute me, the more committed I am to your word. You know, see, see his commitment, see the kind of conviction he has that their persecution doesn't make me stop being committed. It makes me dig in my heels and be more committed. And y'all, there's a sense of of majesty about the greatness, there's an, there's an all that he has. He says that I am in all of your word. He says, you know, I, I understand who you are. You know, we, we live in a, a, um, a society where, um, you know, everyone's on the same level, a, a egalitarian society. You know, we, we see, you know, we, you even hear somebody say, yeah, he put his pants, I ain't nobody, he put, I, I put my pants on one, he put his pants on just like I do, one, one step at a time, you know, the, she ain't nobody, she's just woman like I, he's just a man like I, that's our attitude. But see, they, he lived in a monarchy. And in a monarchy, the monarch is not like regular. And so oftentimes, because of our type of society, if you're not careful, you want to put God and reduce him to your level. Without understanding, God is not your homeboy. God ain't like your homegirl. God is not your dude. God is not your boy. God is not your homie. There's a greatness. There's a grandeur to God. And when you understand that God is not on your level, God is great. God is in a class all by himself. Then it gives you a particular type of awe. He says, I'm in awe of your word that princes come, presidents come, a potentates come and go, but y'all, God is in a class by himself. All right, this is an election year, presidential election, senators, congressmen, assembly persons, they got to run for re-election. Guess what? God has never run for re-election. All right, he ain't got to worry about, you know, the polls and is he popular and what's the issues of the day and do the Democrats like me, do the Republicans like me, do the independents? He ain't got to worry about that because he ain't up for re-election. He don't care nothing about that. He didn't be watching CNN and Fox and none of that. All right. Because he, he's in a class all by himself. And that's what the psalmist recognized. And that's what you and I need to recognize. And y'all, it changes your attitude. It changes how you approach the word of God. It changes even how you come to church on Sundays or Wednesdays or whenever you come, that you understand you are coming to worship God, you are coming to engage God, whether it's on Wednesday or whether it's on Sunday, that this is not just somebody ordinary, but God is in a class all by himself. Right? And the strongest Christians are those who have an awe and an amazement to God. The weakest Christians are those who have a a, 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 a laissez-faire flipping attitude about God. Like God is just anybody. 
Those are the weakest Christians. But the strong Christians understand who God is. All right. Now, now, so this is a persecuted man. But, but, but y'all, that's interesting. He's a praising man. He says, verse uh, 162. Now, he just got through talking about he was persecuted. And the people persecuted him without a cause. He says, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. So now he says, that's why I put there what he discovered. He says, I'm rejoicing in your word because when I, when I f- look in your word, it's like it's, the spoil was what the, the armies would find when they went to battle and won. They would take the, the valuables from the land that they conquered and it's called the spoils. And he's saying that when I get in your word, I'm like, I've conquered something. I, I've gotten something valuable out of studying and reading your word. That as I read your word, it's valuable and it's so valuable to me that I start rejoicing. I start, re- I start getting excited over what's happening. He says, I rejoice. Now y'all, if that's what's interesting. He's got joy. He's got not happiness, but joy. Because y'all, happiness is based on what's happening. And if things are not happening the way you want them to happen, you ain't happy. All right, please don't make me repeat that. All right, but he says, I got joy. He says, I can, you can always have joy. You may not even have joy about your circumstance, but you can have joy in your circumstance. All right, you, you, you rejoice. He says, you rejoice. He says, and watch this. When you have a reverence for God, he has reverence in verse 161. Then he rejoices in verse 162. That those who have a reverence for God's word can rejoice over who God is. If you reverence God's word, if you are in awe of God's word, then it causes you to rejoice. Y'all, y'all notice he says, I'm in awe. A-W-E, all. Now, O, the word O is O-W-E. Now, he's in all, A-W-E. Now, the word O is O-W-E, like somebody owe you something. Now, people who feel like God owes them something, they not in all. And the reason some folk ain't in all A-W-E is because they think God O-W-E's them. You owe me this. You owe me this day. You owe me to have the activity of my limbs. Those are people who think God owes them something. But when you understand God don't owe you nothing, that even your next breath is at the mercy of God. Jeremiah says because of God's mercies, I'm not consumed. That's the, in other words, he said, the reason I'm still here is not because I've been so great, but because of God's mercy. Then you have all, oh, then you can rejoice. Now, what he, that's what he discovered. Now, what did he detest? That's in the very next verse, 163. He says, I hate an abhorred lion, but I love your word. The, the, I love your law. He says, I love, I found much worse in your law. The word of God, he loves God's word. He's inspired by God's word. Okay. And then what he did, 164, go to the next verse. I kind of got to run through this. He says, seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. He says, seven, now seven is the number of completion and perfection. So he's saying, I, I have a complete praise. Praise has become a part of my attitude. Praise has become a part of my day. What does Psalm 34 says? Psalm, you may want to write that down as a reference. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Does that mean that all the time somebody's, you, you praising them that you, no, 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 but it's talking about you have an attitude of praise, that you recognize the goodness and grandeur of God. How beautiful have, has, have these days been here in Albany? All right. Now, now watch this. How beautiful that. So I just today I, when I looked on the, the temperature, it says 68 degrees. I said, Lord, thank you. Because it ain't been a, but a few days that I looked on and it said 38 degrees. In April. And our friends around the country talking about what's the temperature? Oh, Doc. Hey, Doc, it's about 80 degrees here, Doc. What's it there for you? 
So you know what? Let's change the subject, man. Let's let's talk about something else, man. Let's just talk about something else. But I had to thank God. Beautiful day today. Sun's out. All right. We got to work on the air conditioning. It's hot in here right now. Usually it's cold. Huh? But this, this is something to be grateful for. It's something to praise God. So what he said, he did, what I, he said, what I did is I started to praise God. Seven times a day, it became a complete, it became a part of who I was. Now, he is then the peaceful man. That's the answer to that. You want to write that in? The peaceful man. The peaceful man. He says, now, now I'm going to read the King James Version, then I'm going to read it in the uh, Christian Standard Bible. The King James Version says this. It says, verse 165, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing makes them stop. Now, the Christian Standard Bible says it like this. Abundant peace belongs to those who love your instruction, and nothing makes them stumble. He says, when I get to a point of peace where I have peace in your law, I'm not easily offended. You know, we live in a, a day, y'all, where people are easily offended. You almost can't tell people nothing. I was talking to some ushers the other day, and I was commending them because, you know, folk can get offended if you, if you tell them what pew to sit in or not sit in. I mean, just, just anything. Just offended. And when I was in college, we, there was a term called harassed. There's some, so I was harassed. I was just harassed. I couldn't believe he said that I was harassed. We live in a period of people just harassed and just offended and stumble and fight over anything. You know, this is the period of the, of the, of the housewives. You know them show them housewives? And it seems like no matter where the, where the housewi- housewives are from, if they're from Atlanta or New Jersey, California, whatever it is, they're always fighting over some, all the most petty stuff. That's why I don't watch that. I'm like, no matter what, when I turn on, I'm like, what y'all fight? What they fighting over? Just over like nothing. They're always into it with each other about, about nothing. Just offended. I didn't like what you said. I didn't like what he said. I didn't like this. I didn't like, I'm like, really? Are y'all adults? Are y'all two? Are y'all 32, 42? What's going on? And unfortunately, we bring that housewife mentality to the church. When we get so petty and so offended, and when you really think about it, it's really in the whole scheme of things, it's nothing. Or like my pastor says, we major on the minor and wind up minoring on the major. He says, but I love your law. I'm at peace. With, my, with your law, therefore, I'm, I don't stumble. I don't get easily offended. You can't always ride on my chain and get a reaction out of me like that. No, I've come to a point where uh, 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 the psalmist says, I'm at a point now, I'm not easily offended like that. I don't have the housewife's attitude. I've learned how to pray for people. All right, he says, he says, he says, uh, he says, I, I love your law and nothing offends me. He's a peaceful man, but then not only is he a peaceful man, watch this, he says, I'm a patient man. We see the patient man. 166, he says, Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. I have hoped for thy salvation which means, really means I've waited for that. I've waited on your deliverance. I'm waiting on you. I've gone to a point of being able to wait patiently for you, God, with a hope. Hope, what is hope? Having only positive expectation. H-O-P-E, hope. Having only positive expectation. That there are times when God's word, when my circumstances 
contradict the promise that God made me, that you've made me a promise, but I don't see it in my circumstance. But I still, because I trust in the one who made the promise, I still hope in you. I still have a patience for you. I wait on you, God. I have only positive expectation. It doesn't mean I'm not going through. It doesn't mean I'm happy about my circumstance. But God's word is true. And God's word is not based on your experience. God's word is not based on your circumstance. God's word is validated by who God is. The patient man. And then finally, the perfect man. I'll go over it again. It's the peaceful man. That's number three. The patient man is number four. And what's number five? Uh, the perfect man. Now, I'm going to Psalm 167, verse 167. I'll give you a chance to write that. Y'all got that? The perfect man? Okay. Now, my soul have kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies for all my ways are before thee. And y'all, he's saying that I'm at a point, now when I say perfect, it doesn't mean he doesn't make a mistake. Perfect in the Bible oftentimes means maturity. All right, in Job chapter, chapter one, uh, it talks about how Job was a perfect man. It doesn't mean that Job didn't make mistakes because he gave offerings for sins, his own sins and his children's sins. It means that he was a place of spiritual maturity in God. All right, so he says, I'm at a point of maturity. I've grown up at a point now that I keep that testimony. That I, I'm able to reflect on your goodness. I'm able to reflect on what you have done for me. And you know, as I, as I reflect that next month I will be, God, if the Lord says the same, um, the Lord say so, as my grandmother would say, I'll be 50 years old. All right. Y'all don't clap, clap on that. That's an amen. Y'all clap about that. It's all right. Y'all clap. Y'all say amen on that. And, and, you know, I, I think about, you know, what I'm going through physically and praise God, I'm, I'm, I am improving. But but what I have gone through, what I am going through and will continue to go through. But, but you know, I've had friends and people I've known younger than me that have passed away. Just a couple of weeks ago, a, a, a young lady who graduated from Fisk and she when she, I, I did not know her, but apparently I was around her because she, I, she, I was, I saw when she graduated a couple years after me. So apparently I was, a, a, you know, around the, the last final year, I didn't stay on campus, but she was two or three years young. Like when I was a senior, she was a sophomore. So she's younger than me. She passed away. Great singer, popular singer, you know, professional. And then even last year, I had a friend who I did know. We were friends. We sang in the choir together. Shaka, Shaka was in the movie. You remember the movie uh, Elvis Presley? She was, she was the one who sang. You ain't nothing but a. She played the person. You, the, you ain't nothing but a hound dog who wrote that. Okay, Shaka played that in the movie. That's Shaka. Shaka passed away last year. Two years younger than me. And so when I look at, I say, Wait, Lord, these are people younger than me. Not older, younger. I got a reason to rejoice. I'm not, I ain't feeling sorry for myself. I'm thankful for the life that I have, y'all. Because it doesn't have to be. You got to be thankful for what God has given you, what life you have, what ability you have, what, what you have, just you got to be thankful. And that's what the psalmist is saying is that, God, I've been trying to keep your law, but I'm thankful that while I'm trying to keep your law, you're keeping me. You're keeping me. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful for it. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together and give God the praise you can give him. All right, let's stand and have prayer. As we are leaving, just want to remind those men who haven't signed up for the men's retreat, you can do that 
uh, come right to the front here and uh, Deacon Harvey will be here to sign you up or someone will be here to sign you up because we want you, it's gonna be exciting, Pastor Brown, on a Friday, we're gonna kick it off with, a, with dinner and a service and then on Saturday we have prayer and breakfast and then Pastor Brown's gonna teach us and you know, it's up in the Camp Pinnacle, we up, we up, we gonna be high and lifted up, we up in the mountains, all right, so you know, so you can be up with nature we're going to be really closer to God. We're going to be high. We're going to be close. But the nature and the games and there's basketball. So it's going to be a fun time, too. You're going to have some time for fun. So I encourage you to, to, to be a part of it. If you haven't registered, I uh, encourage you to do that. Your $80 takes care of everything, your meals, your lodging, the registration, all that. We don't take up any offerings. The registration is the only, only money we ask you for. All right? All right. Let's pray. Lord, we honor you. We thank you. We bless you for being such an incredible God. You, God, who are able to do all things. You, God, who are such an awesome God. God. Lord, we just praise your name. We thank you. And our desire, God, is that you would make us more like you. Give us a higher desire and thirst as we hunger and thirst after righteousness that you would fill us. Thank you for life. Thank you for strength. Thank you, God, for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy toward us. Thank you, Lord, that we can have peace in the midst of persecution, that we can still hold on to our convictions, even in the midst of chaos, God. Thank you for giving us your peace. You are our peace, oh God. We, we rest in you, Lord. We rely on you, God. And so, God, we just thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah.